Hello there, Big Benedict here. We're playing Gears of War 3 on the Xbox Series X, and this is my insane difficulty guide and walkthrough. We're currently on Act 1-6. It is entitled Hanging by a Thread. Uh, so on that first part, uh, getting to cover, this is the best place to get to cover right here. Um, the the thing about uh, that zip wire section, you might have noticed that I didn't fire. Um, what I think happens is that if you do fire, particularly if you're f uh, focusing on the gunker, um, you're gonna pull, um, you're gonna pull aggro from him, and he's gonna focus on you. So it, sometimes it's better to um, to just not even shoot as you're coming down. Um, you know that could possibly help you. I I. I hope so because it's it's not uh, guaranteed that you can roll to cover there uh, safely, um, but it it's kind of strange because on the one hand I know it's somewhat of a placebo, um, but on the other hand I, I do think that um, attracting too much attention while you're on that zip line could be problematic. So if you are having problems on that zip line. Just don't shoot as you're coming down, and and then just roll to cover, and and then this is why we have the long shot. This is a a, a very difficult fight because you've got uh, you've got uh, mul multiple snipers, and uh, one one guy with a um, a one shot, so it's uh, very helpful here to have the long shot. There are some exploding. Uh, tanks over to the right uh and always you want to try to lean out of cover and make yourself the lowest profile that you possibly can and try to get the best angle on enemies that's that's always what you want to be doing in this game trying to get an advantage um with the cover system there are those barrels right there um you are going to get um on notice here that you're gonna get flanked so what we're trying to do here is uh, take out all the snipers uh, particularly the one with the long shot he needs to get out of the uh, the picture um, and then once everybody up there is finished you can push forward uh, just again be careful because um, uh, we're trying to make our way to the uh, the turret so there's going to be a couple more of the Savage uh, uh, Locust down here. And uh, that Y prompt is telling you that you're going to get flanked. So you need to hurry up and get over uh, to that turret. And in just a moment, you will get a checkpoint. That, that's a pretty rough fight. They really throw you to the damn dogs there. But um, to prevent too much trouble though about getting flanked you, you definitely want to get on the turret because once everybody's dead uh, you just wait a few seconds and um, you're going to get yourself a nice checkpoint so try to reload uh, the machine here and just wait just a second and then you're going to get a checkpoint and there's going to be uh, a, a group of enemies coming out um, at least one uh, one uh, boomer the, uh, the boom shot once probably two and, and a guy with a cleaver so I've never got killed to the um, to, to any boom shots here so you're pretty you're pretty safe in, in this location and the turret is just going to uh, help you considerably over here and then once you get off the turret, you might notice that I have different weapons. That's just uh, the magic of editing. Um, definitely pick up the incendiary grenades. I think they're much better than the frag grenades are. Unfortunately, you can only carry uh, two as opposed to four. But um, they're so handy. They really are. So I've, I've got a boom shot and I've got the retro lancer. Um, the retro lancer is something that um, 
you, you definitely want to get accustomed to on the campaign because it's one of the weapons that uh, we're going to bring to the final boss. Be really careful of, the, of this turret here. And I think this is a pretty good position over here. Um, you, you just really need to take out the guy with um, the guy behind the turret. And it's really helpful to have uh, those incendiary, incendiary grenades uh, because of the splash. And speaking of splash, the, you get um, splash damage um, increases with perfect active reloads with the torque bow and the boom shot. Splash, uh, splash radius increase, and I'm, I'm not sure if there's a uh, a damage component to it, but it's it's very helpful. So as we come up here, there's a uh, a tank that you can shoot here, and we're gonna uh, run up this incline. There is a fork on the road on this chapter. It's coming up pretty quickly, actually. What I really like about uh, Gears of War, though, uh, how, how they do things, is that when you have your your gun reticle over an enemy, it turns red. And I, I really, I really love that feature, as simple as it is. And not many games do it. You know, think of like Uncharted and and whatnot. Um, it's just really strange that, that most games, and I hate every time I play a game where when your reticle is over an enemy, there's no difference to it. And I, I know there's different things like hit markers and things like that, but I, I really I think that um, the simplicity of, of this system is it, just very, very, it's helpful and it's... Um, it, it just it really makes you be able to ascertain you know what you're doing you know because if you got your reticle over an enemy and it doesn't change any color you know who who knows what's really going on and most there's hardly any games that do it every shooter that i play um, I'm always reminded of how how well it works on Gears of War. Okay, so the split path over here, I think by far the catwalk path is the easier of the paths. And fortunately, it doesn't... It didn't checkpoint after I selected a path, so I didn't have to... Uh, redo the entire chapter to get back over here to do to do the path but it's really bad um, this checkpoint over here because if you do die on any of these two scenarios you're gonna have to watch this really lengthy cutscene every single time but um, if you are getting sick and tired of looking at it definitely choose the catwalk it's much easier and having the boom shot is very helpful as well So what this is is that we're, we're going to be on a lower, a lower path, and we're going to be going up to uh, stave off some enemies. So there's about, I think there's like two enemies here, two or three. Yeah, it looks like there's three. This chapter is just so creative too. I, I just I really can't uh, under uh, just I, I can't un understate how how creative and uh, iconic this game is really in the canon of Gears of War. It, it is definitely the best Gears of War ever. Okay, so when you when you come in here. There's a um, 
a fight already in progress. So that that's a guy behind a turret that on the other path is pretty difficult um, and can cause you a lot of problems. And then once everybody in the main room is cleared, you're going to have these guys uh, jumping up from the ground. I love that. Anyway, that was the conclusion of the fight right there. And then we're going to choose the other path. This this is a um, you, you, this is a scenario in which you're going directly into um, the the battle, and it's quite difficult. And enemies are are really keen over here on uh, throwing uh, flames at you as well. There's times in this game when uh, that just happens. They're just um, programmed to. Um, throw more flame so I'm gonna throw a flame at the guy behind the turret he's actually uh, shrouded in a, in a dark area over there in shadows and you really need I mean you really need to watch out for him because he will just he will tear you up so fast And this is also difficult because you're you're right next to the the guys that um, come up from the ground over here as well. And I I tried some fancy uh, bayonet charges over here, and I, I I missed, and it just devolved into uh, uh, just a humorous situation right there. And then. We have a running section coming up. Oh, not quite yet. Oh, we've got some tickers. Now, if you just want to sprint through this, you can. And it's very possible to do it. But um, it's it's really nicely checkpointed as well. Because once you once you clear this area, they're, they're going to immediately give you a checkpoint. These these bugs like to just stop and blow up, so you need to be careful of that. And then we're going to be uh, running from uh, cargo container to cargo container over here as mortar fire is uh, threatening to kill us. And it's really hard to determine uh, where the blasts are going to land it, it comes down to luck basically i mean it, it's just hard to tell it's hard to tell where you know when you can go so i'm going to equip um an incendiary grenade over here the first target that you want to be concerned about is the guy with the mortar so this is the mortar team that uh, the objective is all about we're almost dead you don't need uh, obviously you don't need a, uh, a flame grenade there but it's quite helpful and having the boom shot here is very helpful as well but yeah take take out the guy with the mortar first and then everybody else afterwards and then you're going to get another checkpoint over here as you deal with the gas barge um, I'm hoping that this doesn't give you too many problems um, it's close to you so you don't want to aim too far like you don't want to aim over a hundred meters here and you just want to decrease you want to decrease it as much as you can uh, three shots takes it down I've had problems on that before but on that none also how many times did I die on the um, the very beginning section on the rail when you're on the um, z zip line uh, well I got it on my first try and then I had to redo the chapter because I, I, I discovered that while I thought I was recording um, and had the recorder on, I didn't have it on, so I had to uh, redo the chapter. And then I did have, <clears throat> excuse me, I did have a, like one death after that, trying to get to the um, to, to the cover. So I, I, um, I didn't die on the first try, and then I died on the second try. So it, it, it also just comes down to, uh, you know, the randomness of the game as well. Um, but as you come up here, the tentacle is going to be 
uh, attacking you, but you don't need to shoot it. Um, you just need to watch out every time that it withdraws its arm because then polyps will come. Also, the um, the final section is, um, is is really not that bad either. It goes. It goes, it goes really well because there's nice checkpoints. Um, and we're coming up to it almost, in fact. So once you get up the ladder, over to the right is a collectible, I believe. Um, so if you need that, go to the right. But for our purposes, we're going to head over here to the left. And then you've got a pretty difficult situation over here because there's going to be one guy in a turret um a, a lot, quite a lot of the savage drones and then you've got um a guy with a one shot somewhere so there's also a um a propane tank that you can shoot and I'll show you what it where it is i, I don't know what it does but uh, like what effect it has but it's right over there and I like to think that it does something to advance our success over here. But in that shack, that's where the guy with the turret is. I really need to be careful of him. And all you need to do here is just get to the other side and interact with the uh, container that has all of the tickers in it. Here it is. I'm kind of getting tired. I'm getting tired of the reticle bloom with this, uh, with this weapon. It's just, it's such a, uh, a crazy weapon. And if I had to say, I, I really don't like it, but it, it's very strong, and it's it's tempered by the fact that it doesn't have much ammunition and it's got a very difficult active reload so once everybody is cleared there's going to be more guys shooting up from the ground um, you're not responsible for killing those guys though so again all you have to do is just uh, get to the end and interact with this box right here and then you've done it so that has been hanging by a thread and that has been act one I will see you in Act 2, and until then, please take care.